time to stock up your shelves because you know why? It's January and January is the brainchild of Lisa from Sutton States and she got together 15 of us YouTube channels and we're each making two videos in the month of January and posting them so every single day in January you're going to get either a pressure canning or a water bath canning video. I mean, you're going to have no excuse not to stock up your shelves. Now, below this video, in the information, if you click on that show more, I have all 15 YouTube channels listed with their links and I want you to check out every single one. There also is a playlist so you have no excuse for missing any of the Canuary videos. The recipe I'm featuring in this video is a pressure canning recipe. You cannot water bath can this. You must can it in a pressure canner made especially for canning. Now, if you're newer to pressure canning, I have this video that will give you a lot of great information. And I have this video, which will give you safety information when you're pressure canning. I hope you check out both videos. I also have a playlist with over 35 pressure canning videos. So you can really watch my videos and stack up your shelves. So today we are going to can round steak and onions. Doesn't that sound good? It makes a fast mouthwatering easy supper when you don't have much time. Now at the end of this video, I'll open a jar and we'll actually make the round steak with the onion gravy. So make sure you watch the video to the end. If you're not familiar with round steak, it is from the back, the kind of the hind leg of a cow. And because it's pure muscle there, it's pretty lean and it can be not too tender. But pressure canning is going to help tenderize it. You might also be more familiar with it called top round, bottom round, eye of round steak, or even London broil. If you do purchase the round steak with that little round bone in it, I suggest cutting the bone out, saving it for when you make bone broth, but don't can the bone. Now this recipe is from this book, which I bought a couple months ago. It is pressure canning for beginners and beyond. And it is by Angie Schneider. So here is the recipe. Mm. I have round steak with onion gravy. I mean, it just sounds so good. And believe me, it tastes good too. The ingredients for this recipe is really simple. You're gonna need two pounds of your round steak and I cut off any fat on the outside. Four cups of diced onions, three cups of beef broth. Now the recipe said three cups of beef broth. I use three and a half cups. One teaspoon of the iodized salt. And you're gonna need two tablespoons of oil for cooking. And of course, either four pint jars or two quart jars. And you're gonna need the matching lids and rings. And it is best for this recipe to use the wide mouth easier to get the meat in. Now, it's always a good idea to inspect your jars before you use them. You wanna run your finger over the lid here and make sure there aren't any chips or cracks that would prevent you from getting a good seal when you're processing whatever you're canning. Let's get started. So add the water for your pressure canner instructions. Mine is two inches. Adding some, and I'm adding some white vinegar. Now, if you live in the city, you don't have to add that vinegar, but I live where we have well water and it can be hard and it can make my jars cloudy if I don't add a little vinegar to my liquid in my canner. I'm gonna put in my little pan at the bottom. Now, if you're putting boiling liquid 
in your jars, it's a good idea to heat up your jar so it isn't such a shock to the jar and it will prevent the jar from breaking. You also want to heat up the liquid in your canner. And I want these jars hot, so I'm going to place them in here so and warm up. And got the burner on uh, medium high right now to warm up these jars. They're going to be ready to fill. Now we're going to add our three cups beef broth to our pan here. And then our one teaspoon salt, which I grabbed the half teaspoon one, so we'll put in two. And then we're going to get that cooking. And we want to bring our broth and our salt up to a boil. Then we'll turn it down and simmer until we're ready to use it. Time to sear and brown the meat. Now I have my of oil warming there in the skillet. And I put in my meat. Just going to brown it on each side about two to three minutes. Okay, we got both sides done. We're going to be ready to put the other batch in. Now we get to fill up the jars. Now your jars are going to be a little warm. Easiest way to do this is by hand. Put it on its side, put it in like that. And we're going to have two per jar. <laughs> And yes, the meat is hot. Okay, there's one jar. And yes, it's burning my fingertips. This really is the easiest way to do it. Okay, one more jar. Okay, now we're going to want to push these down. Over the edge there. That's pretty good. Now we have to put about the equivalent of one cup of onion in each jar. So putting our broth in on top of this. Now you want to bring your broth up to boiling while you're doing this. Okay, now we're going to put broth in each jar. Now she suggests if you run out to use boiling water. I need more, but I still have more beef broth, so I'm just going to boil that up quick. And my wok burner brings things up to boiling really quick. So it really wasn't much of a delay. We want a one inch head space. Bubble, but boy, it's firm. 
So I'm using this purchased debubbling tool. You don't have to. Um, I've used a chopstick that works great. You can use anything wooden spoon. Just a good idea not to use metal like a metal knife, butter knife, because metal could chip your jar. Now we're wiping our rims. Make sure we don't have anything on them because we want a good seal, right? Put on our lids. Do our rings finger tight. into that canner, transferring all four cans in, and of course you can make a double batch and do eight pints or four quarts, whatever you desire. And hopefully you have checked your room, made sure you have lubricant on it, put on your lid. Can you see? I have this paper clip in here so I know that that vent is working. That's important. Now we're just going to seal it up. We're going to just tighten them. I always tighten the opposing sides at the same time. There we go. Now we're going to wait until we get steam coming out of there. Be back. Hey, I don't think you can see it, but there is steam coming out of here, so we're gonna time it for 10 minutes. My timer is off, I'm putting it on 10 pound of pressure. And now, we just gotta wait until this cage gets up to 10, and this starts to do its jiggle jiggle dance. Okay, it's in the sizzling, it's up to 10 pounds of pressure. I'm now going to pan it for 75 minutes because it's pint. If you did quart, do it for 90 minutes. Okay, 75 minutes are up. Turning the burner off, and we're going to wait until this gets down to zero. So it's down below zero. We have no more jiggling. So I'm going to turn my burner off. Take off this. Let that little bit yet come out. And now, open. And I'm going to wait five minutes before I take the jars out. Why do you have to wait five minutes? Well, guess what? You don't have to wait five minutes after taking off the lid. It isn't a safety precaution. It is something that was usually stated in the ball book recipes. Uh, it is so the contents can settle and it isn't such a shock to the jar when you're taking it out of that hot liquid and bringing it in your kitchen to room temperature. But you don't have to wait five or 10 minutes. Here they are fresh out of the canner. Now we're gonna wait until tomorrow to label and take off the rings. Always label your jar. I use a Sharpie. I write on my lid the name of what I've canned and the date. Because you might think you're gonna remember when you put it on a shelf, but you might not. It's now time to open our jar and make up a quick supper. Mmm, nice vacuum seal. Now I'm just going to pour this. Okay, and the actual steak. I'm going to put over here. And we're just going to let that drain so we can get our liquid. The book suggests that you could 
Just use a teaspoon of flour and add it to the liquid and make your gravy. Or a quarter cup of half and half with that teaspoon of flour, make a slurry and add it to your gravy. But you could also, let's grab this, use some beefy mushroom soup to add to your liquid or some cream of mushroom soup and add to the liquid. And that would make a great gravy too. But I'm going to just have a beef gravy and just add a little spices to it. So that's pretty good. And now I'm gonna put my onions over here with a steak. And then I'm just gonna put in a heaping teaspoon here of cornstarch. Get that all mixed in. Okay, and then we're going to add just a little flavoring to this, maybe just a little onion powder, a little garlic powder, that's from my own garden, it smells so good, a little thyme, rosemary. There we go. I'm just going to mix this in. Oops, and I added a little pepper too. Might need salt, but we'll wait and see. Now I'm going to add just a little bit of butter to it too to make this just a little richer. Kitchen bouquet. Just give a nicer, darker color, more beefy color. Okay, we're boiling it now. We're just going to get it thickened up a little. Okay, we've got our steak in here and our onions. And now we're just going to pour our gravy on top. And we're just going to bring it up to a boil. And then simmer it for maybe about five minutes. We want to warm up our meat. Here it is. Doesn't it look good? We've got nice gravy in our mashed potatoes. And just look at how tender this is. Just falls right apart. Isn't that nice? And so we have our meat, we have our potatoes, and then we have some fried cabbage. So let's do our taste test. Have some of our steak. Mmm. Melts right in your mouth. Try a little of our onion gravy here. Mm. Mm. So good. I have to have a little cabbage too. Hmm. This is such an easy meal and tastes so good. You gotta try it. Mmm. Thank you, Lisa, for including me in this collaboration. It's always a lot of fun. And I also learn about some great recipes so I can can and add to my pantry shelves. Now get out your canner, your rings and your lids, and your jars and start canning. No excuses.